This is James White with Freak Interviews, where I do Ask the On TV products, infomercial gadgets, and more. Now, the most common question I get is people asking about past products that I've used, if I still use them, if I don't, why I still use them or why I don't. Well, that's why I do these videos. And today is the 21st of those, where I take 10 past products in order and let you know if I'm still using them or not, and why or why not. So today it's products number 201 through 210. Without further delay, let's get right to it. And that's why I'm in the car. Number 201 is Road Trip Travel Gadgets. My 201st review was actually not a single product, but a collection of Road Trip Travel Gadgets when I went down to California about a year ago. It was kind of just a mixed bag of various things. And I'll be honest, I don't use any of them right now, but I did use the Adarest for quite a while. Adarest is a cushion that goes back here. I got my car repaired and then I took it out and I guess I never put it back in. I'm, I need to go find that because it was actually pretty nice. It was kind of hit or miss as far as how, how they went. Again, I think the Adarest was the best of the bunch, but here's some scenes from my original Road Trip Travel Gadgets video. This is the MyPillow Travel, which I reviewed quite a while ago. I also brought the Casper Nap Pillow, which is supposed to be for travel. Ugh. Wow, that seems a lot smaller in person than I, than I expected. The MyPillow is already small. The Casper looks even smaller. Next up is Adarest. This is kind of an interesting gadget. It's designed for your car, and you can use it in different configurations as a pillow, as a lumbar support cushion. This is a steering wheel, I guess they call it a steering wheel tray or desk. All right, next up is the Alpine Rivers Neck Wallet. That's right, a neck wallet. Can you see it? Nobody will know, right? It actually feels like an actual pillow behind my head. So the neck wallet's working out pretty well. It's actually easier to tuck in my shirt than I thought. It's working. Now will it hold this big heavy drink? Ooh, <laughs> but I kind of like the idea. I got all my food right here. I'm not gonna get it all over my shirt. And you could even put maybe a pin there. You could have your mouse. I think it's gonna work pretty well. All right, now we're about to head home. One more use of the neck wallet. So I'm not sure if I, if I like it on the outside. That looks a little bit, I don't know. Number 202 is the Power Smokeless Grill, an indoor smokeless grill. I compared it to the Gotham Smokeless Grill and found that the Power Smokeless Grill was far better. I used it for a few months, I was happy with it, but I have so many kitchen appliances that I decided to give this one away to a friend of mine with the condition that when it came time to make this video, I would get an update and see how it's going. So let's go inside and see how the Power Smokeless Grill is holding up. I haven't seen it in about six months. I missed it. Let's check it out. What's up? There What's he up, is. Man? There he is. Come hey. On, man. Come on, man. <laughs> What's up? All right. So this is my trainer, Kyle. You know what's funny is that I follow him on Instagram, and I've seen the Power Smokeless Grill in there quite a few times. He's always cooking. So I know you're still using it. Yeah, I'm a big fan. <laughs> so, so what are the, what are the pros and cons of the after so, what six or seven months of use, probably? Huh? Yeah, I've been using it for a while. I use it a lot. Yeah, yeah. I always cook my chicken with it. It's really good for cooking chicken. It gives it that crispy outside, kind of that juicy inside. That's a plus. A plus. Another plus is it doesn't have any kind of smoke or anything. Right. It's until, see this is one of the cons. Wow. <laughs> until, I don't know if you guys can see this, but okay. after about a couple weeks, Ooh. the bottom part starts to get kind of gross. And that'll actually start smoking this, if you don't clean it. This is out of the dishwasher. Yeah, it's... You can still see some, some some gunk on there, yeah. Some some crud. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but if you compare that to like an actual grill, you don't really have to wash the grill every time. That's you true. Chicken. You kind of just go like that, and you're kind of good to go, yeah, right? It burns off too. Yeah, and it burns off. Do you, re do you recommend it? I actually do. Okay, I do. So a few cons in the cleaning, but otherwise, yeah. <laughs> I'll load this whole thing up twice in the beginning of the week with that's, just that's like seasoned chicken. And um, if you guys want to see how I do my chicken. For your meal prep, it's good for if you're trying to gain weight or lose weight, whatever you're trying to do. I'm actually going to be dropping a video in a couple days on how I do my chicken to make it taste good. Because I'll link his Instagram below, by the way. So. Yeah, so check that out. But yeah, overall, I would I would definitely recommend it as long as you don't mind cleaning it. All right. Well, here's some scenes from my original Power Smokeless Grill review. <laughs> uh, the Gotham Steel is more square. This is more rectangular. This one has the lid. This one doesn't. The heating element is right against the surface of the grill on the Gotham Steel. On here, the heating element is separate. Looks like the fan is pulling most of the smoke in. I'd say in the very early stages, this power smokeless grill is out in front. 
When I put it on there, I could feel it just grab onto the surface. It did not s slide at all. This one, sliding around. Nice grill marks, I like them. Now the power smokeless grill. Once again, much less impressive grill marks. Not very brown. All right, I've got the heat cranked all the way up and I just got slightly brown on, on this batch, slightly brown. I'm in a bit of a loss here. Hey, I got a little bit of brown. Neither one of these are perfect, but if I had to choose one of these, I would definitely go with the Power Smokeless Grill because grilling inside, the smoke is significantly less. And to me, that's the reason people are buying this. Now the 203rd product review I do is actually a comparison of several jar openers. Now a jar opener isn't something I reach for very often, but when I do, I do use the one that I chose as my favorite of that comparison, which is right there. And the reason I like the Easy Off is because it goes underneath your cabinet, doesn't take up any counter space, but it's always there when you need it. Even something as small as a two liter bottle, so it's very versatile and doesn't take up any space. There were some other good jar openers in that bunch, but the Easy Off is the one that I still use. But here's some scenes from my original jar opener comparison. This is a familiar design. This is the Amiaus, or however it's pronounced brand. Oh, very simple. Not bad, not bad. Easy, easy. This is Easy Off, which is the only jar opener that I have to mount somewhere. So here I am in the kitchen. I'm gonna put it right here, which is a good spot for our jars. Slide it in. Well, there it goes. Easy. Unopened jar of pickles. Oh, no problem. Next up is the Kitchwit, which is the $13 off frame, which is a pretty simple design. Hold the jar and turn it counterclockwise. Oh, wow. This looks like some sort of medieval torture device or something, doesn't it? Oh, very easy. Too easy. This is the OXO Good Grips jar opener. <sighs> Not too bad, that was pretty, pretty easy. This is the Robo Twist, which I did in 2016. Do it. Oh, whoa, whoa. Let's try the Swing Away and see how this does. And then I just squeeze it so it grabs onto it. Oh, wow. I'm gonna go with the Easy Off only because I particularly like the way it's mounted and that you hold the jar the entire time. Number 204 is the flexible mirror, also known as my flexible mirror, which is kind of an update of the my fold away mirror, which is an ASEAN TV product from a couple years earlier. It's named after the flexible arm. It's got a suction cup, a 10X mirror on it. I really didn't have anything negative to say about it, but nobody here wanted to keep using it after I was done reviewing it. So I ended up back out in the boneyard. Overall, I think that the review has been pretty good for this. It's just a matter of if it's, if it's useful for you or not. Here's some scenes from my original flexible mirror review. Let there be light. You're supposed to press down, turn clockwise, and then turn the flexible neck. Now, right now, this is like right in my face. Now, if I look at it closely, whoa, that's where it becomes in focus. You gotta get right up on it. Man, that looks bad. Nobody should ever see themselves this up close. I can see every little detail that I don't wanna see. <laughs> I almost took part of my mustache off. I'll leave this here tonight, and tomorrow morning I'll come check on it and see if it's still there. Oh, it's still here. It stayed up. What I'm going to do is test out this mirror suction cup by lifting up a small table like they show in the commercial. And... Oh! Whoa! I don't think I would use this in the shower because it seems like there's not a lot you're going to do in the shower. You would need to be that close to a mirror except for maybe washing your face, but I think that for makeup, contacts, from shaving your face, it works pretty well. Otherwise, there's times you're gonna need a regular mirror and this doesn't have one. Number 205 is the Shark Apex Vacuum with Zero M technology. Now this is the second Shark Vacuum that I did and I've been using it on a regular basis for about a year now because this Shark Vacuum is the best pet hair vacuum that I've used. I don't think I've ever had a vacuum that lasted this long with my golden retriever hair in my house. So I'm very happy with it. It's held up well. You do still have to clean out the roller, but not nearly as often as with a standard vacuum. I included this one in my best of 2019 for a reason. It's something I use very regularly. Here's some scenes from the original Shark Apex review. 
I think my dogs are about 10 and 0 on vacuums over the last 13 years. If you can see, this is actually on, stuck to these bristles. It's not wrapped around. So once again, just to compare, there was a little bit on the bristles here, significantly more on the Ion Flex. So it's definitely something that's working for this vacuum. And I've got Bailey here who's going to help me out by contributing a fresh batch of pet hair. Right, Bailey? Look at all the hair. Really not very much, just like before. A little bit on these br bristles, but certainly less than the Ion Flex. So overall, I think this is a very good product. Number 206, this is not an advanced Klingon warship. This is actually the Pizzazz Plus, which was a kitchen item that I actually made my best of 2019. Now I'm the only person at my house that uses this, but I use it quite a bit. It's really good for warming up pizza and other frozen foods. And it just looks really cool because it's more like an old school turntable than a kitchen device. A lot of people that have written into me said they really like it as well. I have nothing really bad to say about it. But here's some scenes from my original Pizzazz Plus review. All right, this is it. This is all there is to it, just two parts. It has two heating elements on top and bottom, which can be controlled separately. And let's just put that right in the center. And that's really all there is to it. So I guess now we wait. It's almost done. I've gotta say, I'm a little bit impressed by this. I'm a lot impressed by it. It seems like a lot of the sandwich is not under the heat, which is kind of interesting. What do you guys think? But the timer just went off, so I'm going to take the pan off. Now I'm supposed to let it sit on the pan for three minutes. Wow, these came out pretty nice. All right, it just went off as you heard. I hear sizzling. I'm convinced that this $40 to $50 item is definitely a good investment. You can't do raw meat, but you can do a lot of other things and I think it does them very well. Now number 207 was a comparison of ice cube trays. Now I still use the top two that I chose in that review and I've added one more recently to the bunch. Let me show you what I got. I'm making ice right now. These are my dollar store ice cube trays and down here is my OXO, which has a nice uh, cover on it which keeps it from getting kind of freezer smells on it. I've also recently added the icebreaker pop, which is kind of cool because you can kind of stick it anywhere. Now, if I had to choose between all of those, I would still go with the dollar store ice cube trays because they have a larger capacity and they actually come out of there easier than all the others do. And some of the other ice cube trays that I review were kind of almost gimmicky. The old school one that was 30 something dollars, that one was kind of bulky in the freezer itself. So I'm still happy with the dollar store and the OXO and now the icebreaker pop. But here's some scenes from my original ice cube tray comparison. 14 ounces is the number for the dollar store ice cube tray. All right, this one only held about six ounces. It looks like it got about eight ounces in there and that's overfilled. I'm gonna guess it's probably take a little bit less than that. But all right, that one held about eight ounces, but the cool thing about this is you got this lid. All right, it looks like the OXO held about 10 ounces of water. Now this one, you're supposed to run your hand along the, the top to seal it. All right, that held a whopping six ounces. This one held about 14 ounces, so on the higher end as far as volume goes. That is the shape of the ice cube, interesting. Let's see how it fits into this one of these water bottles. Pretty cool. It's much more flexible than I thought it was going to be, but they're not popping right out. Wow, they just fell right out. There was no effort involved. Just ease this right out. Ugh. Now you're supposed to squeeze this. Minuscule six ounces of ice. There we go. All right. $29. OXO, Ice Genie, the Mini Cubes, the Hexagon Cubes, the Force Bottle Ice Sticks, and the Dollar Store. Leaves number one. You gotta go with the dollar store ice cube tray. This particular one I got at a local dollar store. Sorry to all you expensive competitors, but the dollar store has got you beat in this one. Back here is number 208, which is the Power Air Fryer Oven 360. I think it's a really good device. It made my best of 2019. In the summertime, I used it in place of having my oven fired up when I was making smaller dishes. But lately, I've been using it to warm up leftovers. I'll put an entire plate of food in there, stick in there 15 minutes later, everything's warmed up evenly, the texture is good, as opposed to the microwave where 
you know, warm-up leftovers is kind of hit and miss. Check it out. All right, I've got some leftovers here, and as you can see, they are not warm at all. Look at cold, cold food. Now, if you were to put that here in the microwave, you'd probably get some of this done faster than others. The texture of the chicken would be like rubber, but in here, not quite the same. I put my entire plate in there. That's right, just put it in there just like that. So then I put it on the reheat setting. I leave it as is. Go do my thing for 15 minutes, and then I'll have my lunch. So I'll come back in 15 minutes and show you how it looks. And here we go. Everything was cooked, so now I'm gonna have my lunch. But here's some scenes from my original Power Air Fryer Oven 360 review. Look at the size of this thing. It's huge. How about some toast? It is toasted bread. Huh. All right, here we go, here we go. This, I'm confident. It's been 20 minutes, 10 on each side. Well, that, that concludes my steak test, and now I'm on to something else. It includes a pro-grade dehydrator, so I wanna try that out. Right, these are, are done now. I got the banana chips, came out pretty nice. And even my pineapple, not too bad. What do you guys think? We have rotisserie chicken in the works. So far, everything I've thrown at the Power Air Fryer Oven 360 has done pretty well. It is definitely smoking. Not too bad, but not too good either. There we go, about 45 minutes. Well, it looks pretty good. It is thoroughly cooked. Came out nice. Now the slow cook feature requires you to use a small Dutch oven that will fit in there. Yes, it does. It just fits. I would say that after five hours, the pulled pork came out perfect. And I had nothing really go wrong in my test of it. So as far as I'm concerned, this is a good product. Number 209 is the Arctic Air Ultra, which is the update from the original Arctic Air that I did back in 2018. Now I included that in my best of 2019, not because it's perfect, but because it made so many improvements over the original. I do think they addressed a lot of the problems with the first Arctic Air and made it something that's certainly much more consumer friendly. Now I did use it in the summertime for a while. It did, it certainly worked well, it's held up. I'll probably pull it out again uh, late in the spring when it starts getting hot here in Las Vegas and use it again this year. I might have to get a new filter. I think the filters are about 10 bucks a piece. But certainly I think that it's an improvement and if you're gonna get a device like this, get the Ultra, I'd skip the original. Here's some scenes from my original Arctic Air Ultra review. Not a lot to it, you got your plug and the unit itself. It's like this is the reservoir where the water goes. You say to lightly soak it. Ooh, we have, we have air, we have air. Okay, I'm feeling it, it feels nice and cool. Let's see how cool it is. All right, so here is the original Arctic Air with the Arctic Air Ultra. You can see there's some design differences. Once again, the Ultra allows you to adjust the angle where the original Arctic Air did not. Well, I definitely feel like this one blows much stronger than that one. Showing us about 62 degrees. Let's try the original. Oh, look at this. It could be the fact that the, this filter was put in water why it's blowing cooler though. Oh, look at this, 46 degrees. Can you see my hair blowing in any direction? I feel like it's about equal. And this one is colder. I do think that the adjustable vent, the ice cubes in the reservoir, and the frozen filter make this a much better product than the original. Number 210 is the Blank Will Chill, which was the second Blank Will that I reviewed. It's a weighted blanket that's supposed to keep you cool. Now my daughter is the weighted blanket expert in this house, and she's used both of them. She thinks that the Blank Will Chill is better for the summertime, the regular Blank Will is better for the wintertime, because the cooling effect of the Blank Will Chill isn't really desirable in the wintertime, and it also doesn't really stay that cool for very long. But overall, I'm a believer in weighted blankets. I'm not sure if the Blank Will Chill really offers enough value over the original to make it worth moving to that one, but your mileage may vary. Here's some scenes from my original Blank Will Chill review. Right, well, this looks a lot different than the original. That looks different. I do feel there's a cooler sensation than the original. There's a lot of reasons people use weighted blankets. Sometimes people have sleep problems and it kind of keeps them in place. Some people have anxiety, it makes them feel comforted. Okay, so it is comprised of quilted sections like the original, but they're not as thick. This part feels cool to touch, but underneath, 
The inside doesn't, and this doesn't. You wanna get another blank, chill? You wanna cool off? The tag also says the cover is 100% cotton. This tag says it covers 100% polyester fiber. Who knows? If you can see closely, the material is different, it has a different feel, a different texture, and it does have a cooler sensation to it. So I've had, I've also used the blank will chill, and I felt that when I first put it on, it was a very cool sensation. I actually really liked it, but um, it didn't take very long before it was kind of like, room temperature or my my body temperature yeah. so i do think that even though it's maybe it doesn't stay cold it's cooler than the original mm -hmm. it's cool at first and it's not as hot as the original but it doesn't really stay cool all night so there you have it numbers 201 through 210 this was actually a pretty good bunch a lot of these i still use there's been update videos in the past where i didn't really use a lot of them much after my video this one a lot of these i'm still using if I had to pick one, it would be kind of tough. The Pizzazz Plus is great. The Power Air Fryer Oven 360 is great. The Easy Off is good. The Adarest is actually pretty good. But if you've used any of these, tell me what you think in the comments below. Check out my social profiles for progress pictures, videos, and updates as I go. And please subscribe for more product reviews from me, James White, with Frequent Reviews. Oh, you're still here. Well, I wanted to address something in my last video where I did a giveaway of a couple wallets on Twitter and I got grief because not everybody likes Twitter. I like Twitter. I'm sorry. It's it's one of my favorites. I'm old school, I guess. I don't know. So anyways, for this video, I'm going to go ahead and do another giveaway for people on Instagram. Now, this is a secret giveaway, so I'm not advertising that it's a giveaway. So what I'm going to do on Instagram is I'm going to post a picture talking about this video on January 12th. And by the next Saturday, I'm going to pick a random commenter and give away an easy off, which was the kitchen jar opener that I like so much. Now, don't mention the word giveaway. Just Leave a comment and in there somewhere mention Easy Off and you'll be in that giveaway. And if you're watching this after January of 2020, sorry you missed it. Maybe I'll do another one down the road. But now the video is actually over. I'll see you next time.